Yo! 2002 Toyota Tundra. I gotta do some rear brake shoes. This side dropped a pin. On this side, the pin broke and fell out and was rattling around inside the drum. And the shoe here is kind of losing its backing. So it's only a matter of time before this whole shoe comes off. It's a little bit thin on this side. So I just decided to replace everything. So I'll do a video on this side anyways. I'm going to make this look easy. First thing I'm going to do is put a clamp on the side. I like to do that because when I take this spring off, it's going to push the wheel cylinder over this way. And sometimes on some vehicles, it'll pop this side of the wheel cylinder right out and brake fluid will go all over the place. So I just put this on here as a safety precaution to make sure that doesn't happen. Then I can get in here with a vice grip and take this spring off. I'm just gonna clamp this down and just pry up against the hub and I can get that spring off. I can leave it in there or take it out. Then I got a needle nose vice grip. I'm just gonna lightly clamp down on this and just push in and turn. And this come this spring comes out. And run another retainer on the back side of this. It's rusted in really good. Get that pin out. And at this point I can take this clamp off. And this adjuster will kind of fall out. I'm going to stab that back in there. I can take this side off. There's a little spring down here holding this stuff in. I can take this off like this. Now on this side I got the same deal here. Get this spring off of here. There's an actual spring tool you can buy for these, but I like a small needle nose vice grip better. And I can take this whole thing out as an assembly. There's just an e-brake cable on here I gotta take off like that. I already did a rear lube and adjust on this thing because I thought that's all it needed until I got to the other side because the victim was saying that there was a noise on the driver's side. So I just took it off and I noticed that it was, it was dry as a bone and the pads were sticking really good. You want everything to slide around really nice. And if, if you can bang on the pads side to side and they don't move, then sometimes you might have a wheel cylinder issue where these don't move or, or the pads are just really rusted in here. These contact points, there's three contact points for the brake shoes. Um, I can just scrape these off, but they're like they're really thick here. So I'm just going to hit them with a chipping hammer and get the big scale off of it. And then I can just hit these with a screwdriver or... I got a carbide metal scraper. Get the rest of that off. There's a contact surface here. Contact surface here. That's all clean. Then I just got to do the same to the other side. Then I have some synthetic brake caliper grease. I want to lubricate these contact surfaces. The three spots here and the spot right here where the brake pad, the brake shoe rests. And then this spot right here I want to hit. And then this pin. I want to lubricate the back of the hole for the pin too. Make sure there's a good amount of lubricant back there because sometimes that pin moves around and if that's not lubricated, it'll make a little squeaky noise.
Okay, I got both sides cleaned and lubricated now, as you can see. Okay, I have everything laid out like this because it's just easier to do this way. And it's good to do one side at a time because if you forget anything or if you leave anything out or can't remember the way this thing goes, you can always look at the other side first just to see. Um, I can turn this upside down and this adjuster's got a spring right here. I can take that off and it can get stuck to my glove like so. There's a little e-clip on here on this pin. I can take this e-clip off. This adjuster comes off. This adjuster comes off. And there's a horseshoe on here. A little horseshoe looking thing. I can usually get in here with a regular screwdriver and just twist it open. Then I can get a bigger one out and twist it open some more. There's just enough to get behind it with a screwdriver, and I can pop this out like so. Apparently, there's two different types of brake shoes for this vehicle, so I had to actually bring one to the parts store to get the right shoe. So I can just take this off, put it right on here like this. Doesn't need any lubricant of any kind. This is all dry from the factory. I got a brand new brake hardware kit. You should always get one. I'm surprised they don't just sell the shoes with the hardware kit. I don't know why they don't do that. I don't know why somebody cheat this out and not, not put new hardware in it. It's just, just retarded. Now I can just take a pair of pliers and just squeeze this horseshoe down. You don't have to get all crazy with it. It just has to be enough just to keep the thing from falling out. Like so. After I put the horseshoe looking thing back on, I have this adjuster here. It's still lubed and turns really nice so I don't have to do anything with it. Um, normally these threads, if they were really bad and I had to clean them really good, I'd just put some anti-seize on the threads. And this takes regular silicone paste on the inside. I don't use that black caliper grease for this because if you do that caliper grease, it gets really hard and then this doesn't want to turn. You want all of this to turn really free. So silicone paste usually goes in here. Um, and I can put this on like this. There's a little peg here for this guy. I can put that on, make sure the peg goes into the adjuster, pop that e-clip on with a pair of pliers. Now that I have that on, I can just hold this like this and put that spring on here. It's really weak, so I can just put it on by hand. I suppose before I put this unit on, I'm going to put this spring on be a little easier if I just put it on now. They gave me two different size pins in this hardware kit. I'm gonna put the long one on. Get this emergency brake cable on here. I'm just gonna set this up here. Line up that pin with the hole. Make sure it's in the wheel cylinder. Put my new spring on. My new keepers. Little quarter turn. And that should slide really nice and not make any noise. Now I can put this spring on here. And I got a new pin I can stick in the hole on this side. Spring there, spring there. The only thing I really got to do here is just make sure that this adjuster lines up in this slot for right now. Put my vice grip on there. Now I can break out the vice grip again. There, that's a little better angle.
can let go of that. My adjuster is supposed to hit the, there it goes. That's how that's supposed to work. And now I can just hit these pads and they should slide really nice and not make any noise. If they make any noise, then something's not lubricated right. And if they don't slide, then you probably didn't get enough crust off of the thing. I just want to make sure I don't have any big chunks of grease on, on the shoes. They look pretty good. I'm not going to resurface these drums. I rarely ever do. The only thing I did was just sand a lip off of this. They don't pulsate or anything, so they should be fine. And now I just want to put the drum on. And I, I, I still have the drum off on the other side so I can turn this really easy. And it, it's really free. And I want, the, I want the brake shoes to just barely drag on the drum. Because your rear drum is all in your pedal height. So if it's, if it's not barely touching your drum, I'm going to have a really low pedal. So I'm just going to turn this up a bunch. And I'm going to check this again. It seems a little too tight. Actually, that's about right. It's just barely touching. I can feel a spot where it's free and then it just barely touches. So that feels really nice. I'm going to leave it there. Do the same to the other side. And that's a brake job. Okay, bye.